and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich, and the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Christianity had first come to Lyons only 25 years prior when Polycarp of Smyrna had sent Pothinus as a missionary to Gaul. Pothinus diligently established the Church of Christ in Lyons and nearby Viennes. As the church grew, so had the spiritual resistance. Persecution against the Christians had begun. Christians were shut out of businesses and houses. They were beaten, stoned, and robbed. When believers were arrested and examined by the authorities, they boldly confessed their allegiance to Christ. They were then imprisoned to await the arrival of the governor of the region. Some of the non-believing servants of the Christians were also seized. These servants feared being tortured themselves and testified false accusations against the Christians. They would claim that Christians practiced cannibalism, incest, and other shameful practices. What did you see, slave? I, I, I saw my master eating the flesh of other humans! These Christians, they're cannibals, all of them. It's probably why our crops are failing. They refuse to pay homage to our gods. Such horrific accusations only enraged the mob even more. Those who held their belief in Jesus were sentenced to execution, and those who denied their faith were to be released. Additionally, Emperor Marcus Aurelius allowed Roman citizens who persisted in their faith to be executed by beheading. However, those without citizenship were to be tortured. Christians were confined to the darkest, most awful parts of the prison, where many of them suffocated. Some were placed in a hot iron seat where their flesh was severely burned. Sanctus, a deacon from Vienna, stood firm in his faith. Red-hot plates were fastened to several parts of his body, leaving him disabled. He was an example for the others, exclaiming, Nothing is fearful where the love of the Father is, and nothing is painful where there is the glory of Christ. It seemed impossible that any could live, having been tortured so cruelly, yet they were strengthened by the Lord. They exalted and encouraged one another in the faith. As if things weren't bad enough, the bodies of the deceased Christians were denied burial. After their bodies were exposed to the elements for six days, they were burned to ashes, then thrown into the Rhone River. The bodies of those who had suffocated in prison were thrown to the dogs. The pagans aimed to blot out any hope of a resurrection. Now let's see if they'll rise again, and if their god can help save them from our hands. While the imperial legate was away, the military commander and civil magistrate threw a number of Christians who confessed their faith into prison. When the legate returned, the imprisoned believers were brought to trial. Among these believers was a petite young slave girl, Blandina. Because of her small stature, her companions feared that she would not withstand being tortured. Blandina was not spared any cruelties despite her age and gender. As the Romans accused, questioned, and tortured Blandina, she held her ground and did not renounce her faith. What evil have you and your Christian masters committed? I am a Christian, and we commit no wrongdoing. Bring out the hot plates! Save yourself, girl. Tell us what evil your Christian masters have committed. I am a Christian! There's no sin among us! The Romans continued torturing her throughout the night. Those that tortured Blandina became exhausted and had to stop. Miraculously, she had outlasted them. What more can we do to her? She won't relent, no matter what tool we use against her. After enduring much torture, some Christians were taken to an amphitheater where they would be thrown to wild beasts for entertainment. 
Blandina was then brought out in front of a crowd, suspended on a stake, so the beasts could devour her. Surprisingly, none of the wild beasts would come near her. Do you see that? Can you believe it? None of the lions will touch her. Rather than discouraging people from the faith, this public spectacle actually accomplished the opposite. Blandina prayed intensely as she was hanging nailed to the stake, inspiring the other Christians. Oh my lord, forgive them! Give me your strength that surpasses all understanding! As the other Christians watched, they were reminded of Christ, who was crucified for them and that everyone who suffers for the glory of God will enjoy eternal fellowship with the living God. Blandina had been bound to her stake for days in an effort to have her renounce her testimony. Because the authorities did not get the reaction they had hoped for, Blandina was taken down from the stake and thrown back into prison. The Christians believed that God had preserved her for other contests so that her victory over evil spiritual forces might be even greater. The officials were getting extremely frustrated. Blandina was led to the arena to watch her companions suffer. This time, however, they brought along a 15-year-old boy named Ponticus. For many days, they had been brought to witness the sufferings of others and were pressed to deny their faith and swear by idols. Renounce your Christ and make a simple offering to one of our Roman gods if you desire not to end up like the others. The boy and the others were extremely terrified, so Blandina used every opportunity she had between sufferings to encourage Ponticus and the others to stay faithful. Do not lose heart, dear Ponticus. Soon our suffering will be over, and we will be with Christ in glory. I'm... I'm so scared. Lord Jesus, strengthen your servants. Give us your grace. Finally, Blandina, Ponticus, and the others were thrown into the amphitheater to face their deaths. Young Ponticus had died first, and the others followed. Now, only Blandina remained. After being whipped, facing the wild beasts and burning in the roasting seat, they decided to entangle her in a net and throw her before a bull where she was gored and trampled. Incredibly, the appearance of pain was absent, and a look of peace and joy had washed over her. While Blandina lie entangled in a net, battered and beaten, a gladiator had been sent to end her life with a dagger. One of the wealthy Christian martyrs who was also imprisoned during this time was a woman named Perpetua. She kept a diary of the entire ordeal. She wrote in regards to Blandina, A small, weak, despised woman who had put on Christ, the great, invincible champion, and in bout after bout had defeated her adversary and through conflict had won the crown of immortality. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. 